Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Three thoughts, I think, to kick us off this morning. In a moment, we'll examine the necessity or desirability of a general election. I don't think that there is necessarily much intersection between the two. I'll explain more in a moment. We're also going to have a look at whether or not the Labour Party should do everything within its powers to keep Jeremy Corbyn off a leadership ballot. Jeremy Corbyn, who yesterday was at a Solidarity for Cuba campaign, while the rest of the country was observing the selection of a new Prime Minister. And speaking of that new Prime Minister and the fact that she doesn't have any children making its way like a coach and horses into the news agenda at the weekend, I want to return to that question later as well. Largely because of the power of some of the emails I've received in the last 48 hours from people who don't have children and who are feeling very, very bruised by the coverage of that particular angle of the story. I'm properly bruised. Um, it's, it's my job isn't it, to try and find a way of making their pain interesting or relevant to more people than actually suffer it. And speaking of my job, I have a vague suspicion that I'm about to do something horribly, horribly unprofessional. Uh, and by that, I, I, well, I'm not going to overthink it. Here's the deal, right? I don't want a general election because partly... I think we've probably got democracy fatigue at the moment, if that's a thing even. Also, I, I, I kind of think that governments have to be held to account by cohesive, coherent opposition. And although I'm increasingly able to understand what it is that Jeremy Corbyn's supporters see that the rest of the country can't see. I do begin to get a glimpse of that or, or a better understanding of it, even if he did spend yesterday at a Solidarity for Cuba campaign, instead of setting his troops, getting his tanks on Theresa May's lawn as soon as is humanly possible. I don't think many people would describe the Labour Party at the moment as either cohesive or coherent. And there are, I'm told, by very reliable sources, even people in his most uh, highest office who privately concede they haven't got a hope in hell of winning a general election, which leads me to wonder whether there's any point having one. That might be a slightly skewed or even biased position to hold. I don't know. And then you're sort of left with that. This is why I mentioned that it was probably an unprofessional position to punt. I can't help thinking that we probably should have one. So just to clarify, I am today, in the spirit of Boris Johnson, trying to be pro-cake and pro-having my cake. Pro-eating cake and pro-having cake. I, I, I don't want to have a general election. Very personal. I'm just like you. I just want a pair of eyes looking at the political landscape and wondering what on earth is going to happen next. I don't want a general election because the landscape is so messy and the opposition is so poor. But I kind of agree with Theresa May when she said in 2007 that Gordon Brown had no mandate to be Prime Minister because he had just effectively stepped into the shoes recently vacated without a national vote by Tony Blair. Now, it, it goes without saying, and, and I know you're more than, more than intelligent enough to realise this for yourself, but one or two people apparently don't. When, when you say that nobody voted for Theresa May, it's not a valid intellectual response to say, well, we never vote for the Prime Minister in this country. Oh, everybody knows that. If, if you're stating the bleeding obvious and you think that it's a valid point or a valid riposte to somebody else's position, the chances are you're missing the point if you think that stating the bleeding obvious is necessary. When people say, as I said yesterday, nobody voted for Theresa May, what they mean is that nobody voted in a general election for the party led by her. They voted for the party led by David Cameron. And I think it's fair to say that when you go into the polling booth, you're more likely in Britain in 2016 to have the images of the two party leaders in your mind than you are to have the images of the two candidates from those parties standing in your constituency. I could prove that quite easily by asking, even if you're a political anorak, asking you to name the defeated candidate, let alone name your MP. I, I, many people possibly could name their MP, many people couldn't. Name the defeated candidate, name the person who came second, name them. And then you probably, if you need it, will get a better understanding of, of, of why it is both valid, relevant and wise to say that nobody voted for Theresa May to be Prime Minister. 
Tim Farron on the question of a general election. He wants one, leader of the Liberal Democrats. Quite like the cup, cut of his jib, but he's a bit like your favourite teacher at school, isn't he? Rather than a Prime Minister in waiting, or even a Deputy Prime Minister in waiting, if we were going to resurrect the coalition. The coalition, eh? Who, who knew? Who knew that Nick Clegg was single-handedly keeping chaos from this country during all those years of being Deputy Prime Minister? Who knew that the, the, the nation, let alone the two main parties, would tear themselves to shreds the minute that Nick Clegg got his sandwiches wrapped in a roadmap and moved out of his office in Downing Street? Strange times, isn't it, for, for, for reassessing people? And that's where, really, I just want you to provide the clarity that I lack this morning. So I've got this curious contradiction in, in not wanting a general election because, well, reasons, but feeling as a, on an objective, step out of the fray sort of way that we probably should have one, shouldn't we? Do you feel that Theresa May has a mandate to lead this country? 0345 973 And do you recognise... Do you recognise my position of thinking we probably should have one? That's like me being a grown-up, but then not really wanting one because, well, reasons and mess and the lack of a cohesive, coherent opposition would make the... I mean, also, you know, the Labour Party could lose 100 seats in a general election, mostly to the Tories, mainly even, maybe even a few to UKIP, although the numbers don't really back that up. The Labour Party could lose a lot of marginal seats to the Tories, and some people tell me that's what Jeremy Corbyn actually wants. That's what Jeremy Corbyn actually wants. You get rid of some of these moderate MPs in marginal seats and then you, you, you strengthen his sort of caucus of support. The Parliamentary Labour Party becomes a busted flush. But Jeremy Corbyn has more control and more sort of leadership of, of what's left. And now, given that he spent yesterday at a Solidarity for Cuba event, I, I, I believe anything that they tell me about him. We'll get on to him in the second hour, the question of whether or not it would make sense for the Labour Party to try to keep him off the ballot. Uh, James O'Brien doesn't want an election in case Jeremy Corbyn wins. Uh, that's someone who's just listened to the same 10 minutes of broadcasting that you've listened to. I've told you before that the, the, the Corbyn supporters are now at least as mad as the UKIP supporters. They are uh, so close to each other as to be barely any difference at all between them. And, and there is evidence of it again. Listening to the same programme that you've listened to for 10 minutes and uh, concluding that I'm f I don't want to have a general election in case Jeremy Corbyn wins. Yeah, you got me. Bang to rights. You absolute lemon. Ten minutes after ten is the time. Let's get the phone lines open. 0345 6060973. So what are your thoughts regarding Eagle, James? A bit early to tell. I, I, I mean, I thought she held her own with John Humphreys earlier today, uh, elsewhere on a uh, uh, British broadcasting dial, and she was good with Ian Dale yesterday, but um, I, I don't know enough about her, I've got to be honest with you. Anyone but Corbyn seems to be pretty much the notion or the motivation of the Parliamentary Labour Party at the moment. 11 minutes after 10. Uh, I've got some phone lines free. I barely had a phone line free since before the referendum, but a uh, little bit more content. Um, shall I say it out loud? Every time I say it out loud, Every time I say it out loud, the wheels come off. I don't think we're going to have any major political earthquakes today, he says, as his chair starts shaking and Theo Hutchwood falls into the room with the latest revelations. I don't think we're going to have any major political earthquakes today. We may get another Labour candidate throwing their hat into the ring. I'm told Owen Smith is, is, is considering his position. Uh, we won't, I don't think, get any better indications of what Theresa May's cabinet will look like until David Cameron has effectively and officially disbanded his so he chairs his last cabinet meeting today as Prime Minister, but I don't think he waltzes off into the sunset do 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 doing until after PMQs tomorrow. So I think we can have a slightly more contemplative, contemplative conversation today, but only time will tell. And it begins with this question. It's a twofold question, and, uh, and some people say, you've got to keep the question simple on the radio. I always say, well, with respect, listen to my programme. Sometimes we don't even get to a question, and plenty of people are more than happy to, to contribute their thoughts. It's a twofold question that could appear contradictory. Is it mad to say that I don't want an election, but I think we should have one? 03456060973. Do you want one? Does May have a mandate? Or do you feel actually that in the interests of democracy, we should probably let the Labour Party get its house in order before we go to the country? Jack's in Whitechapel. Jack, what would you like to say? Well, <clears throat> I've always voted Conservative, even though I'm from a working class family. And right now, I'm basically laughing my socks off at the, what's going on with Labour. But like you, 
I kind of agree that there should be a general election. Because Theresa May hasn't really been elected by anybody as Prime Minister. Yeah, because of the reasons you said and because of what she said um, historically about not having a mandate. Yes. But at the same time, I do also think the country's in such a mess. We just need a bit of direction and Labour aren't offering anything. But what I would like to ask you is, if Jeremy Corbyn, if it was election, if Jeremy Corbyn said to the electorate, look, you vote me in and I will guarantee you that we will not come out of Europe. Yeah. Would that upset the apple cart of the country? Mate, you're good. That, I was saving that up for half past ten. That was the thing I was going to throw into the mix after the half past ten really? news. But yeah, seriously, because I think that would change my position. I, I think a lot of people now, uh, whether they vote, leave Corbyn. or remain. They, well, no, Corbyn's not the man to do it, unfortunately, because his support for staying in the European Union was so l lukewarm and, and to many people, bogus. So many he's people. a Brexiter anyway, isn't he? Well, secretly, he's supposedly. Only in, in his job. But if he did that, I mean, don't, don't, that's what Farron's done, isn't it, Jack? If Tim Farron has said that is the mandate we're campaigning on. We will campaign to rejoin or to not leave. And it, yeah, but they're desperate for votes from anywhere they can get them anyway. Well, you say you say that. I think Farron's a stand-up guy. I really do think that he's got a kind of uh, uh, a position. You've just described his position. He's adopted it, and he hasn't done it for cynical purposes. He was a passionate but pro. You've got some really principled people here at the moment. He's Farron's principled. He is, and, yes. Um, and Corbyn's principled. Is he? Nigel Farage's principles. Steady on. Let's not, let's not get carried away here, Jack. No, I've, 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 own, got, I've got furniture, with, land, I've got furniture with more mind, principles than Nigel Farage. But, no, but in his mind, he's principled. Well, he's, yeah, in his mind, he's principled, he yes, but in his mind, he was the victim of an assassination attempt when the mechanic who took the wheel off the car said that the screws had been put on in the wrong fashion. In his mind, mate, he's, Nicholas, probably, he's probably Genghis Khan. One. Yes. But Nicola Sturgeon is another one. And Ruth Whether Davidson. I, I like the cut of her jib as well. She believes. Mm. And she believes what she says. Yes, I, I, I don't know where we're going. I mean, you, you've actually now made me think that maybe a general election wouldn't be such a bad idea, but it would have to become a referendum too, in a way. You'd have to have... I mean, there was talk yesterday of a coalescing of, of centrist politicians in a new party, a new pro-EU party. The idea of uh, uh, Tories uh, to the centre of the party and Labour people to the, to the centre-right of the party joining forces together to offer up the option that Jack describes. I would like that. I'm not going to lie to you. It doesn't matter whether you voted Remain or Leave. I think we're now in the zone where we're analysing things that are happening. We're looking at reality rather than predictions and expectations. It's as if we've had a, we were trying to look over a cliff, working out whether we could fly or not. Now we're off the cliff and we're working out whether we can fly or not. It's just, I think, fair to say most of us are hoping for a soft landing. No one's really expecting to soar away over the sunset, are they? Maybe they are. So another general election with another chance, another bite of the EU cherry, I'd quite like that, but I don't know whether many people would. Oh, three. Four five six zero six zero nine seven three. So, um, uh, Georgia writes, James, you're being disingenuous. We didn't vote for the PM. We voted for the party. Uh, listen, I, I thought I'd address that, Georgia. I'll address it again. I'm wondering whether Theresa May was right in 2007 when she said that Gordon Brown didn't have a mandate because there hadn't been a vote in a general election for a party led by him. So, by all means, call me disingenuous, but I'm only employing Theresa May's own attitude to a succession to the party leadership and indeed to the keys of 10 Downing Street rather than an electoral route to that destination. Strange times indeed. Who are the politicians you're most impressed by at the moment? Many people will answer with politicians that are not attached to the parties they traditionally support. Ruth Davidson, a lot of love, despite the fact that hardly anybody can vote for her in, in the UK, given that she is the leader of the Scottish Conservatives. Um, as Scott knows of what I speak when he writes, I'm a UK Labour member, James, but we're in such a shambles. If a general election was called today, I'd vote for Tim Farron's Liberal Democrats. But do you want a general election to be called today? 0345 I want you to tell me what you want, but I also want you to tell me, with your objective hat on, what the country needs. So, Theresa May argued, as did David Cameron, in the, towards the end of, of the last Labour government, when Gordon Brown took over from Tony Blair, just as a succession, a passing of the baton, they both argued passionately that there should have been a snap general election. Um, in retrospect, Gordon Brown would have had a better chance if he'd called it earlier than when he did actually call it, but at the time, that they both argued, the new Prime Minister and the outgoing Prime Minister both argued that the circumstances in which they are currently exchanging power were not fair on the country. They both argued that. And no wonder we're losing faith in politicians. Theresa May specifically, categorically and definitively argued that people shouldn't be able to become Prime Minister in the way that she just has. Okay? Doesn't mean she was wrong or right, 
but it means unless she calls a general election, she will be hypocritical. That's not the greatest sin a politician can commit. In fact, you'd struggle to find one who's never committed it. But it was her that made this point, and David Cameron made this point. So both of them have argued that the circumstances in which they've just handed over the keys to 10 Downing Street shouldn't be allowed without a general election. I want to know what you think. And then I want to know what you want. Because I'm in this weird place of thinking we probably should have one. But I really don't have the appetite for one at the moment. Jack's in Loughton. Jack, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I actually voted to stay in. Um, but the decision was taken. And I'm, gener- and I'm uh, a Labour person. But um, the, like I say, the decision's been made. I think we need to get on with it. So I don't think there should be a general election. And I would vote Labour, but at the moment, if there was one, there isn't really an opposition anyway. Labour's a bit of a joke at the moment, to be honest. So... Um, well, you're just a red Tory. I was just trying to remember what the insult is for people who think that the Labour Party is in disarray. It means you're a red Tory and you don't care about the poor. I... No, I mean, I, I want... <laughs> that I, I want... What I really want is really a good Labour... You know, Labour to be worth something, but... I, as you stated, well, we're going to get on to that, I think. We, 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 we'll to... probably get on to that in the second hour, although I suspect that these two conversations are going to elide a bit. Why, 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 why not a sort of second bite of the EU cherry? Because it appears... Um, cause it, I tell you why I get cross with people saying, oh, you should shut up now and get on with it. Not to me, necessarily, but there's a sense... Mm-hmm. You hear this abroad a lot at the time. What you have to remember is a lot of people who campaigned on the Remain side and, uh, or even yeah. spoke on the Remain side, a lot of them have been proved right. And what you're saying mm. to them now is, look, we spent two months calling you liars, and now you've been proved right. You better shut up about it and let us carry on treating you as if you were liars. And, and that's really unfair, actually. I think Ian Hislop mm. was brilliant on this, on, on um, Question Time the other night. I only caught up with yeah. it the other day, because I, I was on the yeah. other side at the time. But he, he makes this point, and, and there's two points to be made. The first is that mm. you, you called them liars when they said the pound would tank. Andrea Ledson told me that on June the 24th, the pound would stabilise if we voted to leave the European yeah. Union. It's still close to a 31-year low. So... Why do they have to shut up and get on with it? Why can't they turn around and say, we were right and you were wrong, please, let's stop this madness before it's too late? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, if it's... I'm just worried about the, um, the turmoil it might create by, um, by not knowing what's going to happen, you but know? That's, that's a recipe fear, for that's dictatorships. That's, that's what dictators do. We, we, we'll have elections when things have calmed down a bit. We'll have elections where... But right now, what the country needs is stability. And I, Saddam Hussein, am, am the man to provide that st- stability. <laughs> Maybe not quite that far, but you see what I mean. She is I Prime do, Minister, yeah, I, and nobody voted mm. for a party led by her. That's true, yeah, I know, yeah. But, I mean, that's, that's my fear. I mean, if they can, I don't know, that was the only, you know, because it's hard enough as it is with this with the negotiations yeah, whenever that start. And then, I don't know when, they're gonna, when they start, but if they start that, and then to have that in the back of their head to think, oh, well, this might be all for nothing. I don't know. It just gets really confusing. It so does, and, and, and you can have a binary it's referendum. You can't really have a binary election on one issue. That would be absurd. But it does feel to me that the, uh, that the referendum is... Well, how many callers have we had over the last couple of weeks? We're making perfectly good cases for having voted to leave the European Union, but then expressing regret at the way the result... Well, not the result went, but regret at the way the country has gone since. It's still early days, though. Made that absolutely clear. 10.25 is the time. Jack, thank you. Remember, you can grab Jack's phone line if you're quick by dialing 0345 973 Stuart is in Lisbon. Stuart, what would you like to say? I'd just like to say I enjoyed our call so much last time I decided to call you again. Good man, I remember that, Stuart. You, you, you were t- talking to us about setting businesses up, weren't you, in various different countries? Yes, and also the um, legalisation or decriminalisation of drugs here in Portugal. That was it, that was it, that was it. Where are we now? Where, what's on your mind today? I think there's two important points to be made. I wonder if all these calls for another election would be occurring if uh, Theresa May triggers Brexit immediately. Do you understand? I think I do, but uh, well, no, because the calls for an election aren't really coming from people on, on her side of the political fence who were pro-Leave. The, the, the calls for the election are coming more from the Liberal Democrats and the Labour Party, and, and if anything, I would have thought from remain supporters who feel that an election could provide a sort of a, 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 a second bite of the cherry in some sense. So if she calls an immediate Brexit, then Brexiters will be happy, but Liberal Democrats, Labour and Remainers won't, will they? 
Oh, probably not. Um, if she called an election immediately, that would be opportunistic. Why? Um, Why? It would I mean it means she could come back from the country with a mandate restored, enhanced, enforced, and, and utterly un, undebatable. She hasn't got that at the moment. No, no, but if, if uh, you know, sh seriously, should wait for the Labor Party to sort themselves out if we're going to have a serious election. But on the, on the idea of whether or not she has a mandate, whether or not there should be an election, I think the important point, um, you know, we're all assuming that we voted for, uh, we voted for David Cameron to, uh, because we thought he was better. Better than Ed Is Miliband. Yes. Well, we Is did, didn't possible? we? Well, yes, but was it really a rejection of Ed Miliband? And if it's a rejection of Ed Miliband, then when uh, Jeremy Corbyn took over by the same thought process, there should have been a general election to see if we still wanted to reject him. No, because elections elect prime ministers and governments. They don't elect the opposition, in, I mean, except by accident. No, no, but um, it rejects opposition. It rejects the party. But you don't have a general election every time the leader of the opposition changes. Then why should we have one every time the leader of the government changes? Oh, mate, I can't. I mean, that's a silly question, with the greatest of respect. Why? Well, because elections are to choose governments. Not to choose the losers, they're to choose the winners. But, you Anne, you just, you just uh, gone back on your very first point that you made, that... Uh, we elect governments, not prime ministers. They're winners. It's exactly the same point. We, we elect a government led by a prime minister. And so, I don't know if I need to start using brackets more on the radio. Obviously, when you go into the ballot booth, you have in your head an image of a David Cameron and Ed Miliband. You did not have in your head an image of, oh, actually, do you know, I think I can do this. I think I can do this. Ruth Cadbury and, oh, Mary... Come on, Mary, Mary. She was the concert. She won last time, and she lost this time. Mary, someone. There you go. You do. You do not go into the voting booth for your by-election with an image in your head of Ruth Cadbury in my constituency and Mary, someone. You go in with David Cameron and Ed Miliband. Most people do. Some constituency MPs, of course, defy that stereotype, and they're the best. They're the ones that everybody wants, whatever party they belong to, because they're just such brilliant constituency MPs. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Good lord, it's half past ten already. If you want to grab a phone line, you can get the one Stuart's just vacated. Be quick. No female voices on the programme yet today, um, which is fine. Uh, dominated by them yesterday, but I do sometimes wonder whether there is a difference in political outlook uh, caused by gender. I don't know that there is. I'm certainly not going down the Andrea Leadsom school of thought on that idea necessarily, but I'd just give you a heads up on that because uh, I, I, I like to get as much variety as possible on the board. Time now is half past ten. And just hearing that Angela Eagle's constituency office in Wallasey was bricked Overnight, uh, you wonder why some people are so unimpressed by the hardcore rump of Jeremy Corbyn's supporters. And of course, uh, it's not known yet who did it, but that is possibly an explanation as to why. 10.34 is the time. I, I, I've jinxed it already by suggesting that there won't be any major political earthquakes today. So far, so good. I'm interested in your thoughts on a general election. And you're allowed to contradict yourself today. You're allowed to do a Boris Johnson and be pro-eating cake while simultaneously be pro-having your cake. Because I think we probably all recognise, unless our blinkers are really glued to our faces, we all recognise that we should have a general election, but most of us probably don't want one. So I thought we'd explore the thoughts behind that curious conversation contradiction together until at least 11 o'clock. 0345 6060 is the number you need. Theo Usherwood, our political editor, is on the line from Westminster. Theo, anything we need to know about? What's going on? Uh, well, the words that are going to haunt uh, Theresa May are the Prime Minister is running scared of a general election. Those were uttered by our new Prime Minister-elect in 2007 towards Gordon Brown uh, as he was making up his mind. In the end, he ducked it. If I could just quickly run you through uh, James, who wants one and who doesn't want uh, a general election? Uh, Tory MPs, generally speaking, they don't want one because, of course, at the moment at least, because, of course, the fear was going into this uh, contest at the beginning that if there was one, those in marginal seats could lose their seats. So Theresa May, like her rivals, promised that there wouldn't be one. Le when it comes the, to even with Labour in such 
Well, a, it, that, that is a fair point, and there are now a few Tories, I, I equivocated there because yeah. there are a few Tories who are now starting to see the opportunity uh, that could be presented by uh, Theresa May facing uh, Jeremy Corbyn. If you deal with Labour quickly, I was speaking to John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor, yesterday. He's very keen uh, for a snap general election because, of course, they really want to put Mr Corbyn in front of Theresa May. They see this as an opportunity, and it's also an opportunity to say to the Labour backbenchers uh, that, that actually Actually, they're not, uh, you know, now is the time for loyalty because we're going to go to, to the country and you need to step into line. He told me the phrase he used was they need to back off. Now, when it comes to the SNP, that's a bit more complicated because, of course, they have, when it comes to Westminster at least, they have almost a complete majority. They're only down three seats uh, of the possible seats, the 59 seats they could have in Westminster. So there's nothing to gain there. And there is something to gain for Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmon and the like by the Tories remaining in power. And that is the uh, Mrs May triggers Article 50, takes Britain out of the European Union, and then that's the excuse for Scotland to become independent and remain part of uh, the mm. EU. Now, just quickly on the Fixed Term Parliaments Act, because there's a lot of debate about whether this needs to, uh, whether this should be, you know, uh, applicable or not. If you look at the detail, um, they need two-thirds of MPs need to call a general election or vote in favour of a general election for that to happen. Now, if you take, if you put all of the Tories together with the SNP, let's say they go for it, with the, with the Greens, with the Green MP as well, and the Lib Dems, of course, uh, Tim Farron and his seven other MPs are very keen for one, you only need 50 Labour MPs, which Jeremy Corbyn does have in the House of Commons, to make to reach that two-thirds threshold and call a uh, general election. Of course, it goes without saying that many Labour backbenchers, most Labour backbenchers, uh, you know, those opposed to Jeremy Corbyn, are very, very reticent about having uh, a vote uh, to the country because, of course, uh, they feel that they would lose. While led by Jeremy Corbyn. While, while led by Jeremy Corbyn. Which they might not be by close of play. Well, next he, week. Uh, yeah. Um, well, the, well, uh, the, the, the timetable would be if uh, it doesn't go, if the challenge doesn't go to the High Court, the timetable would be uh, to have uh, to have the contest over the summer. Um, at the moment, Angela Eagle is the only name challenging, uh, and we, we understand Owen Smith will throw his hat in the ring. He's the shadow, was the shadow work and pension secretary, but only if Jeremy Corbyn isn't on uh, the ballot paper. Uh, the NEC meeting, that's the National Executive Council, of Labour, its ruling committee, is due to consider two pieces of legal advice. Uh, the first piece is from uh, Jeremy Corbyn and uh, Unite the Union, that was commissioned by them both, and that says that uh, he, sh he should automatically be on the ballot, he doesn't need the 51 uh, nominations. And then there was a second piece of legal advice uh, commissioned by Labour MPs a couple of months ago, uh, and that states that, uh, there has, uh, that Mr Corbyn would effectively become, under the rules, a, a, a challenger to his own post, uh, and that as things stand, he sh does receive those nominations, and the reason they want him to, to get that support within the parliamentary party is they, they know he can't. So, so he it's semantics, be on the then. It's what we mean by the word challenger, and this is often what court cases boil down to. Does, does challenger include the incumbent or not include the incumbent? Absolutely. And the, and, and Gosh, uh, you're good. I hadn't, I hadn't understood that until I heard you explain it. pre pre 2010, the word challenger wasn't on right. in the rules. Post-2010, it is in the rules, and it will come down to the fact is, if you're going for your job, are you challenging for your job? If they sack me as, uh, from this job and then I go for it again, am I challenging for my job? Or do I say, well, actually, I've got to go up against uh, everybody else who wants what to do you have think? a go? Are you allowed of you? I, it, I was speaking to sources uh, close to sources, sources yeah, close to sources, Tom Watson yes, yeah. uh, last night. He's the deputy leader of the Labour Party. They're confident, um, uh, but it will come down. I think it will come down to a factional vote within the makeup of uh, the NEC, uh, and it will. But, but that won't decide right. the legal challenge, will it? So the NEC probably will. Oh, say I, I, I'll do the politics, James. I'm not going to. I'm not no. going to preempt what a High Court might say. But um, in terms of the politics, in terms of the NEC. Uh, the MPs are confident they can get it through the NEC, and then, of course, it, you know, they will, we're presuming there'll be a challenge on the, on the legal side of things, uh, and, and it could end up in court, and, and that would, of course, delay uh, a, a general election, and the <coughs> feeling is then that if it delays it, how quickly could uh, Theresa May call that snap election and, and, and strike when Labour are at their very weakest? Even weaker than they are now? Well, if they're still fighting over who's the leader, uh, yes. <laughs>
Okay, Theo Usherwood, no major political earthquakes yet today. No, we, we might have one at around 3 or 4 p.m. today. What would that be? Well, that would be uh, the, the uproar if uh, the NEC, the Labour NEC, ruled that Mr Corbyn uh, shouldn't, be on the, shouldn't be on the ballot unless he can secure those 51 nominations. It, there will be uh, significant pushback. So, two quick questions. Number one, you think that that is probably going to happen at the, the moment? Feel, the feeling is from MPs, they're confident. And number two, could he get 51 in any circumstances? Haven't, haven't, wasn't there more that, I mean, there weren't that many left after the vote of no confidence, were there? Yeah, there was a signal, though, from Mr Corbyn and, and in, in an interview he did at the weekend where he alluded to the fact that MPs could change their minds. And I don't want to put too much emphasis on this, yeah. James, but if what we see is uh, con um, constituency Labour Party groups put pressure on their members of Parliament and say, well, if you don't... Uh, support Mr. Corbyn. If you don't put your name to a nomination, we're going to deselect you because momentum type uh, fringy mm. members uh, hold sway in those local party meetings. Uh, then Mr. Corbyn may be able to rally enough support to be on uh, the ballot paper. Wow. So you're not going on holiday anytime soon? Not anytime soon, James. Well, Joe's delighted. He's just tweeted to say, always fascinating hearing from out Theo Usherwood. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. It's 10.41. Uh, always fascinating listening to Ellen in Edinburgh as well, who's on the line next. Ellen, what would you like to say? Hi. Um, I want to say that um, the Tories were elected on a really clear mandate. With like Their manifesto was really clear, and that's what they've got a mandate for. But post-Brexit, their manifesto is going to be completely different. Yes, it so is. As much as, I, as much as I don't want another election, how can we not have one? Like... It's the most undemocratic thing to just come in with a different manifesto that they've got no mandate for. Well, it's, I mean, it, 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 it's even worse under those circumstances than when Theresa May described Gordon Brown as having no mandate because Gordon Brown fought the general election on the same manifesto that Tony Blair did, whereas, as you say, post-Brexit, a lot of the old manifestos are, are, are toast, aren't they? They're, they're, they're irrelevant now. Exactly. It would be one thing if David Cameron had just stood down and Theresa May stood stepped in and ran the same manifesto, but it's going to be completely different. They've got no mandate to do anything. What do you say, and I suspect you're one of them yourself, so uh, oddly I'm going to invite you to address your own concerns here, to people who just don't have the stomach for it, they just don't have the appetite for it, and they're genuinely worried that division in this country is, is the worst in living memory, and that a general election might just make things worse. I think it is, and living in Scotland, like, we've just had our Scottish elections, the last thing I want is another election, yes. and another facing another Scottish referendum like but uh, how can we not <laughs> like, another big but <laughs> in the interest of democracy we need to have an election but I really really don't want one the problem with that of course might, might translate into pitiful turnout and then it, although mandates will be established they'll be weak they're going to be running on the issue of EU and whether we stay or whether we go that's turning basically into another referendum yes Although, I, I mean, I make no apology for holding the position that now that we're looking at the reality of leaving the European Union, people really should have, <laughs> should have had this vision of what it looks like rather than predictions of what it looks like before they cast their vote. Can I ask you a personal question, Ellen? Do you mind? Yep. Uh, did you fall out with people, like family, or, like properly fall out during the Scottish referendum, the independence referendum? Yes, and there's still very, very real divisions oh. over that up here. I was going to ask how long it took for, for, for wounds to heal and friendships and relations to be fully restored, and I suspect you're telling me that they, they haven't been yet. No. Oh. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I think had the Brexit referendum been the other way around, 4852, we would never have seen the end of it. Um, no, no, exactly. All the people saying shut up and move on would be calling for a second referendum. In fact, you know, they'd be claiming it was a fix, remember? We had that phone in just before the vote was cast. If, we, if I don't win, James, nice people, straight faces. I, I don't know how you avoid ridiculing them, but I'm doing my best. But they said, I, I don't, if it goes the way I want, James, that is the only circumstance in which I won't believe it was fixed. If it doesn't go the way I want, I'll be absolutely certain it was fixed. And that is why the phrase post-fact politics is one that you're going to hear a lot in the coming months. Whether you hear of a general election, I don't know, but you have to address Theresa May's insistence that Gordon Brown had no mandate when he took over from Tony Blair, despite the fact that the electorate had voted for the manifesto that both men supported. The manifesto that Theresa May and David Cameron fought the last general election on is now irrelevant because of Brexit. So surely her mandate is even weaker than the one she described as being non-existent when she was talking about Gordon Brown assuming the top job in identical circumstances to the ones in which she's just got the keys 
to Downing Street as well. Are you still with me at the back? You, can I give you a little glimpse into what a mess my life is? You think you're disorganised. I thought I was working tonight. I've just had to check the television schedules in the Daily Express to establish whether or not I am working, and I'm not. So I've brought my suit to school. I've brought my shoes. I've brought to school. I've got everything with me. I've got all my TV kit and caboodle. I've just checked the TV schedules. I'm not on. I'm not doing it. I've got the night off, and I've already resold the ticket to the circus that I was supposed to be going to. With it. I'll see if I can get it back. Can you talk amongst yourselves for a moment while I try and get that ticket? It for the circus back so I can take the kids to the circus after school today. The time is coming up to 10 to 11. Who, who cares about general elections when there are such important matters unfolding live on LBC? Well, I do. Do we want one? No, nah, probably not. But do we need one? Interesting. Peter is in fleet. Peter, what do you reckon? Um, I don't think I really have the appetite for one. Um, but, um, I think <laughs> it's not, you're not home. talking about tea cakes, Peter. No, no. <laughs> it, it feels, it's a bit like tea cakes, isn't it? You it is. You want to have them? Yeah. It is. Um, but I think we have. Oh, to I have couldn't. One. Oh, just one wafer thin mint, Peter. A wafer thin mint. <laughs> just one more. <laughs> Uh, uh, it, it's all basically it's ended up a mess really hasn't it which is in a way why we need one I mean, so much happened in the last few months and everyone every party set out their manifesto we're going to do X, Y and Z but then the big mountains come in the way which has changed um, changed the way they're go um, everyone's going on it mm. so everyone needs to really set out okay this is where we're going from here whether it be the, the Conservatives still saying we're going to be leaving but this is our vision of what is going to happen how we're going to do it another party says okay actually if you elect us we're going to stay but at least when everyone is voting yes. and they know what they're voting for on it. Yes, but um, they're voting for more d uncertainty in a way. I, know, I, I do believe, given the closeness of the vote and the number of people who've seen that they weren't being lied to by economists and experts in the run-up to the yeah. referendum, it's almost like they deserve to have a second bite of the cherry, yeah. but, but that's not going to be, a, a shall we say, a unanimously popular position, no, is it? Is kind of, <laughs> it? It kind of speaks to, um, to, to um, another, another problem, because say, for example, and it's unlikely to happen as much as I'd love it, Lib Dem say, okay, you vote us in, we're going to keep you in. Mm. Um, being in our current electoral system, first past the post, they could then get in with only 35% of a vote, um, and then we end up staying in the, staying in the EU. So then you kind of end up with another problem there, which, hang, we've stayed in the EU by probably a lower mandate than the mandate... And then on the other hand, just because we're in the business of highlighting how mad everything is at the moment, you started it by describing everything as a mess. On the other hand, we now have a situation in which in a representative democracy, which means we elect MPs to exercise their skill and judgment in what they consider to be our best interests, we've now used a referendum to order them to vote in the House of Commons in a way that they think will harm the country. Yeah. Which Happy is, days. Is, Happy days, is, Peter. Yeah, and then there's the other thing. Is, um, you've got people on the side saying um, Theresa May has a mandate because the Conservatives were elected in. You don't, you don't, um, but she wasn't elected. Um, the well, I think that's a valid point, but it's not a point she believes because she argued the precise opposite when Gordon Brown got the big job. Exactly, which goes to the point. I mean, people are saying that, but then the same people are then saying, well, the <laughs> Labour can't be elected because Jeremy Corbyn's the leader. Well, hang on, you can't have it both ways. You either elected the Conservatives based on David Cameron or you didn't, so the same would apply to the Labour Party, so Corbyn could stay because they could be elected even though he's the leader. So they're wanting, again, having the cake and eating it on both sides. Oh, you're brilliant. Seriously, when's your book out? Well, I, well, I was thinking right one the other day, but then it's time, isn't it? But, yeah. <laughs> do you know what my late dad used to say? Whenever I said to my late father that I was writing a book, do you know what he used to say? <laughs> what? He said, neither am I, son, neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10.52, you're listening to James O'Brien and Peter on LBC. Philip's next in Guildford. Philip, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Good morning. Hello, yeah, um, no, I think not a chance. No, no prospect of a general election in the, in the visible, in the foreseeable future. Miss, uh, Mrs. May is uh, is a, a, a hostage to her party. Um, I think me thinks she's kind of a willing hostage to her party yes. and the sense of gravity in her party in the constituencies who she didn't have to go and have a have a have a, a parley with. And in, I think in the, in the parliamentary party is firmly Brexit. She would be absolutely dead in the water if she no, didn't... The, par the, parliament the parliamentary party is not firmly Brexit. Well, I think they probably are. Uh, they probably are now. They probably are now. Um, uh, well, so why, why would they have changed their mind? Well, I think it's nuanced. I think that, um, that, that it's not... Um, that there, there's, there's so many different versions of ah, it. So you mean the quiet Remainers who are quite comfortable with what's like happened? Herself. Like herself. She's yes. a quiet Remainer, but she's, she, they, they were, they're, they're, 
Perhaps Brexit's the wrong word, but certainly yes. uh, various 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 um, strains of Euroscepticism ranging from um, you know across the spectrum. But really, the, and certainly in the constituencies, it's pro Brexit. She would be dead. I think she'd be sunk if she if she didn't deliver it. And her. What do you think would have to happen for the people you describe to change their minds? I, I mean, what 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 would constitute? I mean, in terms of what was described as Project Fear, and, and certainly on an economic level, it's currently true. It doesn't mean it's going to stay true. Of course, things may steady. We may re-overtake Bitcoin in the international currency stability <laughs> stakes, fingers crossed all round. And then once we've, yeah. once we've toppled Bitcoin, we can go after the Argentine peso. And then we might yeah. actually become the fifth largest economy in the world again, because we were overtaken by France last yeah. week, yeah. weren't we? So, so what do you yeah. think would make the most hardcore sane Eurosceptic. I think we can ignore the sort of swivel-eyed sector of, of that school, but the, the hardcore ones to think, actually, do you know what? I hate the EU, but maybe better the devil we know. What would need to happen, do you think? Uh, well, I, I, my gut sense is that the free movement thing is going to quietly be forgotten about um, because th that would be, I think, ultimately tied up in the, in the in the irrevocable wreckage of the British economy. Mm. So I don't think that... I don't no, they won't buy it, no. I mean, this is this is the opposite answer to the question, because right? there's, there's going to be huge <laughs> fury if people don't it's see foreigners getting it in the neck. Amongst the swivel-eyed ones, yes, yes. perhaps. But, but I think that they will not allow her to call an election until uh, Brexit is in the bag, because everybody knows, everybody and their, and, their, and their cat knows that an election can only be a proxy for a rerun of the, of the, of the... Do you think so? Referendum, definitely. Yeah, unless Corbyn's in charge, because Corbyn isn't going to go in on a... I th is he going to go in on a, on a, but we can change our mind about this ticket? Because he didn't seem a particularly passionate supporter of Remain. I still buy into the notion that, that he might have voted leave. I think he's a, I think he's a hostage. Be a, if, he, if he should remain the leader, he'll be a hostage to factions of his own party anyway, so he'll do what he's told. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, he'll be a pro-Remainer, and he'll have to deliver Remain, but they won't have the choice. That's my, that's my sense. Yeah. Yeah, nice, all, thoughtful, um, thoughtful all, analysis. This is all uh, wishing in the wind. It, it's going to happen because... <laughs> just for, because for people whose radios may be a little, uh, <laughs> I don't know, a little old, <laughs> Philip just said, Philip categorically said wishing, wishing in the wind. I want to make that absolutely <laughs> clear. <laughs> and, and then I think she will go for an election, but only probably in, in a couple of years from now. 20, 2019, 20, I mean, they'd have to get it past the Fixed Term Parliament Act as well, of course, but I don't think that's quite as difficult as some people suspect. It was designed to stop the Conservatives reneging on coalition when they thought they could go to the country and get re-elected without Nick Clegg in the uh, in the sidecar. But of course, that, that that scenario lasted or was relevant only for the duration of the coalition government. 10.57 is the time. Not for the first time, I think. We've mentioned Nick Clegg this morning. Who knew, hey? Who knew that for five years he was the one keeping all this madness at bay? T Tory party tearing itself to shreds and the Labour Party tearing itself to shreds. Charles is in Frankfurt, uh, Portugal and Frankfurt today. Lisbon and Frankfurt, see? Uh, we might have pulled out the European Union, but this programme's getting more European every day. What would you like to say, Charles? Yeah, morning, James. Uh, you were looking for a ticket for a circus just to go down to Westminster. That was the first one. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but I want one that's got... I, I, I want one that's not just clowns. No, uh, another thing coming out to Europe which uh, concerns me, I'm a Brit living in Germany, uh, one of those disenfranchised British as a citizen, yes. uh, and really um, just looking at the democratic deficit that the EU, EU is uh, accused of, 24% uh, of the eligible electorate uh, voted for this government. They then went on to call a referendum without a minimum um, you know, participation mm -hmm. uh, or a qualified majority. Um, I've, I've got a slight problem with that. Where is the mandate? Where is the real genuine mandate? For, you, for, I mean, you, you, you know that you're talking sense, and you know that you have facts on your side, but you know that all I have to do is open up my switchboard and you'd be shouted down into oblivion by people saying things like, stop talking the country down, get over it, uh, uh, we've got our country, I don't know what the latest slogans are, but, but that's what you're up against, that's what post-fact politics yeah, is. Slogans, yeah, but slogans such as, uh, we want control back, I have never seen anything more out of control. Yeah, uh, than, people than won't see it like that, Charles. I promise world, you. The world that I, I promise you people won't see it like that. You are talking about people who have seen a ship sail over the horizon and come back 180 days later to the other side of the island behind them and they still think the world is flat. Mm -hmm. That's well, who you're have, talking have to. Have people well, okay, but I mean, I can only chip in my sort of five pennyworth. I mean, no, I, 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 I can only chip in this side. 
from, from this side of the pond, uh, so to speak, or the channel, uh, I mean, the, the negotiations. I mean, I'm also desperately trying to work out, you know, what, what strong position uh, the UK has got. I mean, this freedom of movement is a fundamental pillar. And I think, you know, the EU, be it from Merkel, be it from Brussels, you name it, they've all said this is a fundamental, you know, part and, and part of the deal. Now, a negotiation always, you know, has compromise. But, I mean, the position from the Brexit side is that, no, we want to control, you know, movement, freedom of movement. And the European side is that. And it is so such a it's fundamental... It's not even on the table. Affair. I mean, that is going to be the first and by far the biggest bone of contention, isn't it? It's going to be fascinating to see. It actually allows a little bit of light onto Theresa May's outwardly strange insistence that she couldn't guarantee EU citizens in this country. But I suppose on the other side of that coin, people like Charles are worried about their future.